Well, morning troops. Oh, what a glorious morning it is. Another day, another river. Look at the scene. Oh, it's... <laughs> I've just been sitting here contemplating life, the world, the universe. Oh, it's brilliant. I mean, I've seen tench rolling, bream rolling. There's plenty of silverfish topping. Kingfishes are whizzing up and down the river. It's not as cold as I said it would be. It, no ground frost or grass frost, so it's quite pleasant. There's a nice tow to the river, nothing major. I can go out as far as I want, hold bottom with a one and a half ounce lead. All three baits are in the water. And at the moment, I'm fishing all three rods with roach on. Not a tactical decision. <laughs> I was setting up and it was still a bit dark, so I just grabbed the first three baits are at the top of the bag they all happen to be roach but as I say it's an absolutely stunning morning on this river today let's hope we get some stunning action Morning troops, another day, another river. As I said earlier, it's a glorious morning, it really is. It's starting to get a bit of frost now. I said it weren't, well, I think it's quite mild. I mean, I'm dressed so bloody warmly, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually sweating. But my unlucky mat's got a bit of frost on it, so it's maybe it's a bit chilly as I thought, but it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, just before I run through with you why I picked this win today, it's um. Not feature packed, there, although there are features. It was, I was driving along, and I drive along quite slowly when I'm coming to a, a the river. I just don't want to spook anything too much, and I just want to have a good look. Not so much spook, because a solid great car going along the riverbank is going to spook anything, isn't it, <laughs> with headlights on. But just so. I, slow enough so I don't really miss anything you know you can do that in the countryside it's a bit harder you know if you're urban fishing and you know you live in a big town or whatever but along here you know before it gets light it, there's no traffic so I can you know I can just poodle it along and I saw a few well gutted I ain't got my feeder rods so <laughs> I saw a few tench and a few bream rolling I thought oh, that caught me eye straight away so I stopped then I see a load of silverfish topping as well. So immediately I'm thinking, right, I'm fishing here. What else is here? Apart from all them fish, there's a outlet for a drain down to my right hand side that was pumping out this morning. It's not now. It was running water off. That's always a good feature. I had quite a few fish along there. It's, they stopped pumping out now. Oh, I don't mind. It's a, it's a bit deeper water there, and it's uh, it's been productive in the past. So it's like a sheet. Strange. I, 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 the weather forecast said it'd be quite windy today, but it's like a sheet of glass at the moment. But downstream, I can see where the wind is uh, a different angle to the riverbank, and it is quite choppy down there. So the fact that it's a uh, Calm and flat is immaterial to me. It was the uh, it was the fish that I saw. Obviously, <laughs> it helps when it's calm and flat to spot the fish. But yeah, so that's why I picked the swim. There's plenty of silvers. There's some tension bream rolling. It's a beautiful morning. Got my rods out. Just thought I'd say hello and before I have my breakfast. And uh, let's hope the perfect conditions result in a, <laughs> a perfect day. Let's catch some fight troops. Mm -hmm. 
Well, <laughs> first two hour update and the uh, session so far hasn't gone to plan. <laughs> I've done a lot of swapping around with the rods, repositioning, wasn't happy with any of my rods, where they were, what baits were on them. And <laughs> but I've got it all, I've hopefully sorted now. You know, I've, oh yeah, I've still left the baits in half hour, but then I've, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'd rather have this bait or this type of size of bait or <laughs> this freak in this pot. So I've been, I have moved them around a bit. Yeah, nothing's happened. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, as I say, it's a glorious morning. It clouded over for a little while. The sun's back out again now with a vengeance, as you can see. I've got... I've no longer, I've no longer got three roach on. I've, I've got a sardine on one, small roach on one, and a small bream on, on another. So we're going to... Uh, I'm quite happy with my rods, where they're set out. The swim. There's a lot of weed down to my right hand side, which I have to avoid, even with a Paternoster rig. It's still coming back the weed. I think a lot of weed has been chucked and pumped out of the drain, so I finally worked out where the clear spots are and where the weedy spots are. So it's a, it's a very fine line, so I'm dropping it in right where the weed starts. But you know, I've got all three rods in good positions now. I'm quite happy. Just a matter of catching some pike. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me about my Paternoster rig, so it's a. I mean, a lot of people use them. But it's a, you know, I've sort of tweaked it and designed it for myself. I didn't copy anybody else's rig, but I, I should imagine virtually all rigs are the same. But I'll run through it with you again in a minute because a lot of people have been asking about it. The reason I've sort of toyed with it and tried it was some of the venues I fish got problems with mitten crabs so I wanted something that would keep the bait off the bottom but it seems to do really well on all the running water as long as the water's got a bit of toe in it that's a great bit of toe just as long as there's a nice gentle flow and above it it keeps but keeps the bait you know going with the current off the deck and it's you know, it's worked a treat so far this season so I haven't missed a run on it tried it at the back end of last season and it was very successful I'll leave the uh, link up there for that video but yeah I'll run through the uh, at the moment I've got two Paternosters on and one static dead on the deck so I like to have different methods out there but I'll uh, what I'll do is a little bit later when it's when the sun's not in my eyes and it's easier to film and see what I'm doing, I'll go through the rig with you. You're right, troops. This is me pattern nostered running rig. Well, it's a pattern nostered rig for running water, better explained as that. And I'm going to show you how I set it up because a lot of people have been asking, so here it goes. Got your rod, lines ready through, you're all ready to go. So up your line, close your bead, tools your stop knot. Float of choice, I always use sliding floats. Threaded on the line, that goes up, and another bead to stop the float dinking into your swivel. So, stop knot, bead, float, bead. Now, you want to tie on your, your trace elements of your pattern ostrich rig. So, the first thing I do. That's your float element done. So what I do is I tie on a swivel. Once again, my go-to knot. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Seven's my lucky number. <laughs> well, I think it is. I, some people do six, some people do eight, some people do five. Mine's seven. You'll see a quite a big loop between the swivel and where the line's twisted. Go back through that loop. Moisten your line down. Tighten down. That's your swivel attached. Now that stuff can't go anywhere. Tidied up, snipped it off with the scissors. Excess line always goes in the bin. And now, as I say, now, with that swivel on, you're ready to do your, your trace part. Now for the trace element of my Paternoster Briggs, I don't use the same. I had a bite there. <laughs> Bit of debris coming down. I don't use the same wire as I would for me traces. I buy a load of cheap stuff for this element of the rig. Because what you want is about two foot. Two foot of wire. Approximately, don't have to be exact, two foot of wire. And you're going to crimp that onto your swivel. So you get your, get your trace. Put your crimp on first. Put your swivel. Through the swivel. There you go, it's on there like that. You get your crimp tool. One long, slow press. It's done, it's crimped on. Got a tag in there, tidy that up. Right, now troops is where you find out how finicky you are. Now you can leave it like that. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I always put rig sleeves on. <laughs> I don't like a big tangled mess. The way I look at it is if there's a chance it could tangle on little bits of metal sticking out or rough edges why well, take the chance so just slide that onto your swivel now you've got your trace now you want your that's your up trace now you want your actual fishing trace to be attached to the line and the way i do it you can either use big float stops or you can splice soft rubber beads onto the the up trace i think i think float stops are expensive i'm <laughs> so i use beads but it's quite simple i'll show you how you do it you've got a soft rubber bead they've already got a hole through the middle you don't want to use that hole that's too big what you want to do is get your splicing needle and poke it through the side of the bead. So it's on your splicing needle like that. Smaller splicing needle you can get away with. The bottom of your up trace, 
just bend over it, bend it over, put a loop in it. There you got your splicing needle and you just push the bead onto the trace. Now it's nice and tight, it doesn't move easily. It will over time, but when you put them on, they're nice and tight. They ain't going nowhere, and that's on. Next to go on, now this is where you're gonna tweak the setup to suit yourself. Now I make my own traces, I don't use shop bought traces. So all I put on is a barrel swivel. My tie, and I will tie my trace directly to that barrel swivel. Now, if you bought shop bought traces on there, maybe you want to put a quick adapt, quick lick adapter swivel on there. But that's me. So the swivel goes on. In case you missed the first one, the bead. You pierce it through the side. And goes on. So the whole run from north to south, you want to go from west to east. You want to go through the side of the bead. You got your loop there. Don't worry about that loop it being kinked because you're going to use that to put your swivel on anyway, aren't you? Again, you make a loop. And you just push that bead on there. And there you have the swivel, the two beads for your trace. That's done. Now all you need to do is put a swivel on the other end of this. Now, <laughs> I know some of you will be sitting there thinking, well, why put another swivel on? You can just run that straight down to your weight and have a long trace. And the reason I do it is I don't want those beads and that swivel for the for the trace to, to drop any further down the line than two foot eighteen inches. So what I do is I put another swivel on. If you're gonna use a rig sleeve, put your rig sleeve on first. Then you crimp and you swivel. Your swivel's on the loop. And there you have crimp tool. Again, as I said before, get it in position. One slow, deliberate, long press. That's crimped on, ain't going nowhere. Tidy up the tag ends. Again, in the bin. Now you have your float, your up trace. So that's 18 inches to two foot. And I'll explain why in a second, I have it that long. So this is not a great rig for shallow waters because of the uptrace is quite long. But the reason I have an uptrace quite long is if I've got them beads and that trace set at that depth and a pipe comes on it side on, I don't want it taking mono underneath. So I have a great big, well, a great big <laughs> two foot uptrace. And that's got my beads and my swivel on it ready to tie me trace to. Now you trace. Now what size trace you're using will determine what size drop you have from that second swivel to your weight. And that's about 12, 15 inches. So you want roughly double the drop. So you're looking at 20 to 30 inches. All of a sudden you're looking at two foot. You know what I mean? So... 
on first goes. A long, if you, if you can get them, very long rig sleeves. This is not a rig sleeve, this is a solid bag stem. I use solid bag stems because they're quite stiff and they poke, they will poke the rig right out away from your running line. Thread that on your trace, just drop it down. Your swivels, and they're already, your swivel's already on there, and all you want to do is crimp that to your swivel. Again, you just crimp that as you've crimped the others. One long, slow, deliberate press. You don't want to be going down quick and sharp and at funny angles. Make sure you're quite deliberate in your crimping. Moisten it a little bit to help this solid bag stem go on. And that goes all the way down to your swivel. Now all of a sudden, it's starting to take shape. Right, your bottom section, you, you drop to your weight. Now there's two ways to do it. I'm gonna show you the mono way. <laughs> you have a length of mono with your weight of choice attached. Use your own knot of choice. I use the same knot I used for the swivel before. And you want that again, 18 inches to two foot. And you want to tie that to your bottom swivel. Now sometimes I, I, sometimes I go all the way, my bottom section is also wire. I usually use wire. So I would crimp a bottom section to there. And have a, two foot of wire at the bottom with a loop on that's crimped and then I would tie my weight on with six to eight pound mono onto that as a weak link in case that weight gets snagged you don't want all wire because you're not going to break that rig away from any snags you're going to leave a rig in the water so you need a weak link so I'll show you the easier way the more cost effective way is just use a you drop made out of mono. So we've tied the drop on, as you see, 18 inches or so, two foot max. And there we have it. And you can see that solid bag stem is kicking that trace right out. Now that would be like that in the water, that weight would be on the deck. The flow of whichever way it's going will take that bait upwards. So if you drop, your weak link, your drop is 18 inches, you'd be 18 inches off the bottom. But you can adjust it, and that's why I've got two foot wire up there. Just move them beads up, and all of a sudden that's halfway. Now all of a sudden, that bait is three foot off the deck. As a rule of thumb, you don't want that drop, that last drop there. You don't want your trace more than half, half the length of it. So that drop is 30 inches. Maximum you want is 12 to 15 inches of trace. And that is my running water pattern Austin rig. Well troops, about an hour of daylight left. Ah, it's been a real, real struggle, real tough day. It started off, I, you know, I thought it was perfect. There was silverfish topping, I saw tension bream rolling. There was kingfishers whizzing up and down the river. It was quite mild. About an hour in, it started, must have opened the floodgates at Boston. 
the river's been bombing through all day. It's dropped about two foot from when I arrived, the water level. It was really getting difficult at one point to hold bottom. It's not too bad now. I mean, they've slightly eased up on the running off. It's, you know, it's a bit better. But it's been a real tough day. About one o'clock, I thought, I've had enough of this. <laughs> I'm going to pack up and go home. <laughs> and then I saw the uh, Mrs. W, the good, good lady wife, out on a training run. She's 58, <laughs> type 1 diabetic, and she's in training for her first ever marathon next year. So she was, she was out on a training run, so <laughs> that made me feel a bit, <laughs> that made me feel a bit uh, shamefaced, really. I mean, all I'm doing is sitting here waiting for a bite. It's not that hard, is it? And there she is, there she is doing a training run for a marathon. So that put me in my place. So decided to stick at it. I haven't had any joy, but you know, it's a, it's a day out on the river. There's a guy about quarter of a mile, half a mile upstream. I've heard his alarms go three times, so he's, he's definitely had three runs. I've seen him with a landing net as well, moving around, so I think he's had a few fish. Just goes to show you, doesn't it? You know, this, this swim looked perfect this morning. This time of year, you know, I mean, early December, this time of year, you, you know, I should really, you should be really be, uh, if you're gonna move swims, it's gotta be quite early, half 11, 11 o'clock. Because once the afternoon gets here, that's it, your daylight's gone. And it's, you know, it's, as I say, it's the last hour now. So, just had a recast of all the baits. I say, it's not running off as much as it has been all day. Yeah, the water has dropped a good two foot, but let's hope the, uh, the pike are active this afternoon and this evening. <sighs> let's crack on, let's catch some fish. that moaning and groaning five minutes later we're off and running lovely little double she put up a really good fight cracking fish gonna get her back look at that big head yeah. and that was on the running water paternoster rig here we go let's get her back
Well, look at it, it's almost four o'clock <laughs> and it's already almost dark. I'm going to fish for another hour or so though, I'm going to fish in the darkness. Not because I'm desperate for another fish, but I'm always desperate for another fish. <laughs> Purely selfish reasons, I've got temporary traffic lights in the closest town, village, so <laughs> and it'll be absolute chaos during the rush hour. So I'm just going to hold tight. See if I can nab a few before it gets dark. It's uh, they've stopped running off. As soon as they stopped running it off, we had a fish. It's in perfect conditions again. Started off in perfect conditions, but didn't have anything. It's finishing in perfect conditions. The moon's out. <laughs> the uh, winds dropped down a bit. It's still definitely the witching hour now. Let's see if we can um, make it pay with a a big girl. Well, that's what we want. A big croc before the light gets too bad. I mean, obviously I'll, uh, any trophy shot I'll show you, but uh, soon be swapping the old head camera for a head torch and um, get settled in for the last hour. It is absolutely beautiful this evening. It's really a joy to be on the river at times like this. So it was a joy to be on the river this morning. It's a joy to be on the river in the evening. <laughs> All that bit in between was a nightmare. <laughs> But we're there, we're up and running, we know we, we've got another session under our belt without a blank, so that's always good. And uh, we just got to wait for a big one now. And if I don't see you uh, with a big one after I've had this little bit of a chat, I really do appreciate all the views, all the comments. Really is, the channel's really starting to grow now, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much everyone, and let's hope we get you a nice big 20 before we go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the bank real soon.